So we are, um, I'll be finding the series in Daniel distinctive, and it's about us as God's people living distinctive lives. And, and all the way through it, that is the key thing that we need to hang on to. Our God is distinctive. Our God is unique. He is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and He alone can save. And He calls us to be a distinctive people in the world today, to be salt and to be light. Now, just by way of background, very quickly, um, Daniel was taken into captivity as a very young man, probably a teenager. He was trained among the very best, and him and his three friends, um, and we will read about them today, uh, they were elevated to high office in the Babylonian Empire under King Nebuchadnezzar. What's quite unique about this, uh, this book in the Bible, Daniel, is that it's very interesting that most of the Bible in the Old Testament rather is written in Hebrew. But here we have a big section of this, of this book actually written in Aramaic. And so we are currently in this Aramaic section. So, the woman you see in that image is, is Maureen Martin. I sent out a petition on the, um, on the church uh, WhatsApp feed uh, for those that are interested or willing to, to sign a petition. But this woman was fired from her job for the statement you see up on the screen. She was applying to be um, the, uh, not applying, but she stood to be elected as the mayor of Lewisham Council here in London, so just down the road. And on her, um, the statements that she had in terms of her, her manifesto as mayor, and she is also one of the leaders in a Christian party, was the thing on marriage, and I quote, I pledge to cut through political correctness and simply state the truth that natural marriage between a man and a woman is the fundamental building block for a successful society and the safest, safest environment for raising children. And for that statement, she lost her job. And she states, she couldn't understand you know, why her bosses were so upset about this. So by the way, on her political stuff, she then got permission from the company to be involved. Um, and on her political stuff, not, there was no mention of her company. So people that didn't like what she said kind of trawled through the internet and Twitter and what have you, and they found the company and then made a complaint and so she lost her job. And uh, she is now being represent, represented by Christian Concern. So if you want to support her and others like her, then please do sign the petition. This is what she had to say when people were upset. Oh, yeah, freedom of speech causes upset. People can disagree. That's what it is all about. I might not like what you say, but I will fight for your right to say it. I know people will be upset, but I can't contain my views in case it causes upset. We either have freedom of speech or we don't. I'm not always happy with what others say. I appreciate that my views can cause upset, but it is not hate speech. I'm simply expressing my opinion based on fact. So here is a woman that sought to be a Christian in the world and to be salt and light on something which was a little while ago was just fairly normal. Why is this a statement worth getting fired from? But this is exactly what has just happened. So what about you? What is God calling you to do as a child of this in the world today? How do you take a stand? And here we find this very, really, very really well-known passage uh, about these three young men who are about to be thrown into fiery furnace. 
Now they were prepared to take the stand to the cost of their lives in the tank days. What about you and I? What are the stands that we are going to take for the cause of Christ? And to do it humbly, but bravely. So in our world today, there is this major problem of idolatry. Anything that is not the worship of the one true God is idolatry. And here we find it. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 90 feet high and 9 feet wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Now King Nebuchadnezzar has a... Uh, well, he is now probably at the very height of his power. Um, when the story opens in Daniel chapter 1, Nebuchadnezzar is a brand new king with a fledgling empire. And yes, he does conquer Judah and take Jerusalem off of it. He destroys it. But now he's about 20 to 25 years into his reign. And he is at the height of his power. And because we've been so successful, why not put up a brilliant statue in my honor? And so that's three, that's five stories high. That's pretty big. Ninety feet high and nine feet wide. And then all of the high and mighty were called in for the king to make this announcement to the herald. So I'm jumping onto this four. Then the herald loudly proclaimed. This is what you are commanded to do, O peoples, nations, and men of every language. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship, not the Lord, worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the peoples, nations, and men of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So my dear friends, those watching online as well, what do you worship? What has hold of your heart? Is it truly the Lord? Is it a desire for family? These are good things, but they cannot replace the Lord. Is it children? Is it job? Is it power? Is it success? Is it money? Is it addictions? Whatever else it might be, that if it's not the Lord, friends, this is our God. In fact, Augustine, St. Augustine had this to say, which I think is brilliant. Idolatry is worshipping anything that ought to be used, and I like the next part, or using anything that ought to be worshipped. Sometimes we use God. We want Him when we need Him, but when things are, you know, things are easy, then maybe God isn't that important. Our pleasures and our wants and our desires actually take first place. There's a story told about an American minister, um, Reverend Donald Barnhouse. He was counseling a young woman uh, outside the church after, after a service. And she said that she wanted to become a famous actress. And that once she'd achieved this, because she was now leaving the church to go to New York and, she, and for fame and fortune, and once she'd achieved this, then she would follow Christ fully later. Now that is idolatry, isn't it? And Reverend Barnhouse, they just happened to be standing outside the church and they had to be in a, a post box there where you took, put your mail in. And he took his keys and he scratched the paint of the post box. And he said this to her, God will let you scratch the surface of success. He will let you get close enough to the top of the ladder that you know what success is, but you will never achieve it. 
because the Lord will never let one of his children have anything rather than himself. Years later, Reverend Barnhouse went up with this girl again. And she confessed that what he had said had been amazingly prophetic. This had been her life story. She had in fact even got a picture into a national magazine or newspaper. So she really got pretty close to the top. And this is what she said to him. I, can, I can't tell you how many times in my discouragement I have closed my eyes and I've seen you scratching that post box with your feet. God let me scratch the edges, but he never gave me anything that could replace him. Isn't that interesting? Friends, if you're a child of God, why would the Lord give you something that will take the place of the one who deserves your worship and your devotion? Because that is the Lord himself allowing us to go deeper and deeper into our God. Friends, we need to be very careful, and the scripture does talk about this, when the Lord gives us what we want. That is a dangerous place. Because very often what we want is not what we need. Amen? That is seen at the Romans, I think Paul writes the Romans about when God giving us what we want is part of God's judgment upon us. God keep us from what we want and Lord give us what we need. But there were three men with a godly reputation. They would not bow. At this time some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews because I'm sure these three were not the only ones not bowing to the iron. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You have issued a decree, O king, that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, half pipes, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews who have stepped over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Now, these are Jewish men, and their, 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 their Babylonian names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We pay no attention to you, O king. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Yeah, these three men who had high office, they wanted to be taken out by these astrologers. And so they come to the king. And like this woman we heard of uh, earlier on, they are about to end up not, not just losing their jobs, but likely losing their lives in this case. <coughs> Friends, it is absolutely vital that we need to, to build a reputation. And I love what the scripture speaks about, you know, that even though people might say bad things about you as believers in Christ, they will see your good deeds. And what does it say? And glorify your Father in heaven. And it speaks about that on the day of judgment, at the end of times. Billy and Gloria Gaither, did you know the Gaithers that were involved in singing many, many years ago? Billy and Gloria Gaither um, were newly married. They were actually teaching in uh, the, the U.S., in uh, Indiana. And in the place where they stayed, there was a, a patch of ground that they really would love to establish a home on. The only problem was that much of the land around this area was owned by a banker by the name of Mr. Yule. Now, Mr. Yule was in his 90s. He was very old, but still would go to the bank to his office there and, you know, and, and continue to work, which of course was many, many years ago. And um, he had a statement, and there was, there was a reputation of this Mr. Ewell, that he never sold land. He just didn't. The stuff he bought, he kept, and he just bought a lot more of it. And he would always give this excuse as to why he wouldn't sell to anybody that he inquired. And, and this was, and I quote, I promised the fathers 
that they could use it for their cattle. That was always his statement. I promised the fathers, the farmers rather, that they could use it for their cattle. And then Bill and Gloria gave them visited him at the bank and they asked him, they just took a step of faith, about this land. And then he looked at them over the top of these bifocal spectacles and said to them those famous words, I promised the fathers that they could use it for their cattle, it's not for sale. And then he paused and said, by the way, just, just remind me, what is your name again? And, and they said, yeah, my name is Bill Gaither and this is my wife Gloria. And then came this very interesting question. Gaither, Bill Gaither, he said, are you, are you perhaps related to Grover Gaither? And Bill said, yes, he was my grandfather. And Mr. Yule put down his paper, he moved his glasses, and he said, interesting, Grover Gaither was the best worker I ever knew. He would give a full day's work for a day's pay. He was so honest. So, what did you say that you wanted? And they spoke about this 15 acres, just quite a bit of ground, that they would love to be able to purchase. And so Mr. Yule said, let me think about it and come back to me later in the week, which they then did. And Mr. Yule then said to them, said to them, well, I have values, and I'm prepared to give you the land for $3,800. And now you think about $3,800 per hectare times 15, that's nearly $60,000. That's a lot of money. And, 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 and the game was, we can never afford this. And so, but Mr. Yule said, no, no. $3,800 for the 15 acres. And that was a massive discount on what this land was worth. Many years later, Bill Gaither was walking on that same land which became their home, beautiful place, with their son. And he said this to him, Bill Gaither's son, Benji. Benji, you've had this wonderful place to grow up in, but you did nothing to earn the privilege. All of us gained it on one thing alone, and that was the good reputation of your great grandfather. Isn't that interesting? Now we have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who have a good reputation, and the world hates them for it. The world wants to take them down. Friends, may we, you and I, have a good reputation. And if the world comes against us, so be it. But we stand for Christ, and we stand for truth. Amen? There is worldly pressure that will come. So how does King Nebuchadnezzar react? Fury, furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so these men were brought before the king. And can you imagine it? If anybody has the power of life and death, this man does. I mean, surely it'd be easy to compromise. Surely the Lord would understand. What would be the problem in that? I mean, you don't really mean it. Anyway, never can ever say to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Straightforward question. Straightforward answer. Or rather, still, the, the challenge. Now when you hear the sound of the old flutes, the lyre, half pipes, and all kinds of music, I'm sure there's drums in there somewhere. <laughs> ah, <laughs> really, uh, I mean, I'm white on this line, no way. Anyway, so if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then very interesting words. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? When so often for us things might seem overwhelming, how do we escape? What hope is there? You know, who will be able to rescue us from the challenge and, 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 and the oppression that might come in our way? What God will be able to rescue? 
But we know his name, we're not. His name is Jesus. The world wants us to be kind of cookie cutted out. You know, the world wants us to fit its mold. That's what, what those the place in the cookie cut is. You know, it wants to shape us into what is pleasing to it. And as Christians, we need to be shaped by Christ. Amen? And not give in to worldly pressure. There is worldly pressure for us as church to become like the world. We don't know we are being, we are called to be distinctive, are we not? We are called to be distinctive. In this beautiful image, by the way, there's a video. This is uh, just a, I took a, 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 a screenshot from a, a video. This is a just a beautiful image with this doctor and these two precious children. They're not his own, they're, they've got two separate mums. His name is Dr. Dermot Kearney, and he's a, 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 a doctor here in, in England. In May 2021, Dr. Kearney was stopped, he was prohibited from providing emergency abortion pill rescue therapy. So in this country today, a uh, woman can through the mail just get abortion pills and take them at home. You know, two pills and you know your baby is dead. And so often women, after having one pill, regret what they have done and they want help to try and save their baby. Is that a wonderful thing? And this doctor stepped in to help such women. And the medical, the general medical council banned him. And they told him that he was not allowed to practice and not allowed to provide this medication for a period of 18 months while they investigated him. Can you believe this? This country. I mean, I'm ashamed of someone. Anyway, the, the General Medical Council I'm reading here uh, made a move to prevent him from providing this treatment. And, and here I quote the article It is believed to be the first time a medical doctor, hear this, has been prevented from providing treatment that saves lives. Can you believe it? And this matter was going to go to court. And the uh, General Medical Council of uh, Great Britain realized that they were going to lose horribly. And so they actually withdrew um, their objection to this, and he was allowed to continue to, to provide this life-saving treatment. And these are two children whose lives he saved. Isn't that beautiful? Just wonderful. I mean, how, how could this be seen as wrong? You know, shame on us when, when, when we take on board you know, the, the thinking and the mold of our world. In fact, I, I, there was a statement that was made by one of the women who, whose, whose baby he saved. I kept in touch with uh, Dr. Kearney, sorry, Dr. Dermot Kearney. I was blown away by his kindness. He never pushed anything on me, he just cared. He never pushed religion on me. I'm very concerned about what is happening to him. And so I offered to do what I could do to help. She was going to go testify on his behalf. He did, not, he did not ask me to do this. At a time in my life when I had no hope, he was a light. If it wasn't for him, I think I might even be dead right now. Certainly the baby would be to stand for the Lord takes courage at times, doesn't it? It does. But let us be strong and courageous. The Lord is with us. Amen? So Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. I mean, here they are pretty up front with them. It's almost like they're standing toe to toe with the king. We don't need to defend ourselves to you in this matter. If we're throwing for blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, 
We want you to know, O King, we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Friends, we need to be like that egg, distinctive, to stand out at times. Yes, we need wisdom in when to take the stand and how to take the stand. But friends, in the life of every believer in the world today, there comes a point where our faith and our stance on so many things will be challenged. Friends, to those who are being saved, we are the aroma of God. We're not, the Bible tells us. We are a beautiful aroma. But to those who oppose us, we are a stench. But friends, let us be aromatic Christians. By the way, it doesn't mean to say you can't use the odor. I don't mean it in that way. Let us be strong and courageous, friends. Let us be courageous. There's a story about just a fantastic account. This goes way, way, way back um, during uh, the time when Prussia was still a nation. Frederick the, the Great was ruler of Prussia. And he had a general. His favorite general was a guy called General uh, Zeitig. And General Zeitig was a very devout man. And one day he wasn't able to come and sit with the king. And if there was no other royalty, he would actually sit at the right hand of the king, the, the seat of highest honor. And, uh, and, and he went off to, to church. And King Frederick was mocking him as he returned. You know, and all of the lackeys there were laughing at the king's wit. Because King Frederick the Great was not a religious man. And just in a way like Shepherd, Meshach, and Abednego, we had this general stand up and take a stand. And this is what he said. He walked to the king and bowed to him as you must. And he said, Your majesty knows well that I am a brave soldier, that I have fought courageously for you and for my country. You know too that I am ready to die for my country. Dying to defend our rights and our liberties. But there is one who is over us, a being more powerful than you, O King, or all men together. He is our God and our Savior, who to redeem the world shed his blood. Now I will not stand here, O King, and be offended by words or irony and disrespect even by you. For in Christ is centered my faith, my hope, all my consolation. Had it not been for the protection he granted to our arms, and others to our military, we never could have gained the victories we gained. And if you do not honor him, then you need not expect to see your country prosper. This then is what I have to say to you, O King. Now, I hope your majesty will excuse me. And with that, he left. And as he was leaving, the king was apologizing to him. Isn't that interesting? Lord, may we be courageous. But friends, even so, persecution comes. It truly does. And Nebuchadnezzar was furious. The Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace even seven times hotter than usual, and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie them up and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent. And the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Can you believe it? Even the folk who threw them in died. So hot was this furnace. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. And friends, what is amazing is the fact that something strange happened. 
God is the one who delivers. And even if he doesn't deliver in this life for us to believe, we know that he will ultimately deliver us to glory. Amen? Then King Nebuchadnezzar left to his feet in amazement, asked his advisors, were there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? And they replied, certainly, O King. And he said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Just amazing. Reminds me of a story. I wasn't able to actually confirm all the details of the story, so forgive me if this is uh, not 100% correct. But I certainly what is true that a guy called John Payton, a Scotsman, was a missionary to what was then called the New Hebrides Islands. Uh, uh, Vanuatu is what they call it today. But he was a missionary to these folk, and they were cannibals. They ate missionaries. In fact, in some of the reports, you know, sadly, his wife and young child died. And he actually lay on their graves for like three or four days and nights to stop them digging up the bodies to go eat them. And that really happened, that I could verify. But apparently the, 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 the tribal, the tribe hated them, wanted to burn them, wanted to burn them out, wanted to kill them. And then um, one night the, uh, the, the tribe came and, and they were, and, and, uh, and there was great prayer. I think uh, Peter's wife was alive at that time. And they were just praying for, for the Lord to, to do something, anything. And then a year later, the tribe of this, uh, the, the chief of the tribe was converted to Christ. And Peter asked him, what stopped you from attacking on that night? And this is what the chief replied. Who were all those men with you? And Peter said, there were no, there were no men. There was, no, there was no one there. It was, we were in the house praying. Well, the chief said they were afraid to attack because they had seen hundreds of big men in shining garments with drawn swords circling the mission station. Isn't that amazing? How God can at times just miraculously deliver. And ultimately deliver this one who's a cannibal to, to come into faith. And now you go to this island, I think 80% of the people are true believers in Jesus Christ. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. Isn't it amazing? Come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. <coughs> and now the Sabbath prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. Remember, they were at one point bowing down to the idol. Isn't that interesting? So it wasn't just King Neb, but they, a lot of witnesses were there to see their demise and the glory in it. And they saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched. I love this bit. There was no smell of fire on them. I mean, if I do a barbecue, you know, my wife is constantly telling me to go and shower because I smell like fire. Smell. Anyway, because, and can you imagine, not even the smell of fire on them. It's just incredible. God delivers. Amen. He saves. And he is a miracle working God. And greater than all that is our God rules. He reigns. He is sovereign. Amen. Then, Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship anybody except their own God. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut to pieces. And their houses will be turned into piles of rubble. Why? For no other God can save in this way. And friends, to Jesus now saying it is still true, isn't it? No other God can save except our God. And then the king promoted them to even higher office in the promise of Babylon. 
It's an amazing story, isn't it? Hey? Doesn't your heart stroll as we read this, this, this true account of what happened? And friends, our God is not dead, He is alive, amen? amen? Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So friends, let us not fear what man can do. Let us go through life with a godly fear of the Lord. And let us be strong and courageous. Let us not be bound by idolatry. Let us not give into worldly pressure. Amen. Let us be strong and courageous. Why? Because the Lord delivers. He vindicates. And though the powers of our world might seem great, no, no, no. Our Lord rules. He reigns. And He's worthy of our worship. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this phenomenal message. We want to pray that, Lord, if we are bound by the idolatry, Lord, set us free, we ask in Jesus' name. If we are giving in to worldly pressure, we want to pray that we will find the courage and the strength to stand in Jesus' name. And so, Lord, help us to be deceived. Help us to be strong and courageous. Because, Lord, you are the one who delivers. And you are the one who rules. And to you we give all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Gareth. We're going to sing.